these blessings and rest upon our master Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam his blessed household, his loyal companions <coughs> and all of those who followed after with excellence up until today of standing Ameen, Ameen, Ameen The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam in a narration he mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala presented to him the mountains of Makkah in gold and silver Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala presented to him the mountains of Makkah in gold and silver. Now, man from the east to the west, from the time of Adam alayhi salam to the end of time, is but searching for this, is searching where he can find gold and silver from, where he can find wealth from. And this is the search of mankind. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala offered the creator of the heavens and the earth offered mountains of Makkah to the Prophet in gold and silver. Without any hardship, without any work, without any difficulty, without any traveling, here you go, the mountains of Makkah in gold and silver. The Prophet refused. The Prophet he refused. He said, I don't need the mountains of Makkah in gold and silver. But rather, the day that I have food to eat, I will thank you. And the day I go hungry, I will be, I will be patient. The day I have food to eat, I will thank you. And the day that I have nothing to eat, I will sleep patient. The Prophet said, on the night of Mi'raj, one of the uh, incidences that occurred with the Prophet was that Jibreel presented two bowls to the Prophet one bowl had milk in it, and the other bowl had wine in it, wine from paradise. He presented both so that the Prophet ﷺ takes a choice and he drinks. The Prophet ﷺ said, when Jibreel ﷺ presented these two bowls to me, he pointed towards milk. He indicated to me, take the milk. So he said, I took the milk and I drank it. And then Jibreel ﷺ said to me, now that you have taken the milk and you have drunk it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed you with uh, uh, the gift of absolute servitude and slaveship and servitude to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's made you an absolute and, what, and His most special servant and slave. Whereas, if you had chosen wine, then you would have been given kingship. If you had chosen wine, you would have been given <coughs> kingship and kingdom. But because you chose milk, which is from fitla, it's from nature. Milk is from nature. Because you chose milk, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed you with the nature of man before Allah, and that's servitude, to be a servant. <coughs> Now the scholars have said that one of the most beautiful things in this story is that had the Prophet ﷺ chosen wine, he would have never been related to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Had he been made a king, we would have never said Muhammad is the king of Allah. This would have been impossible. But because he chose milk and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed him with the station of servitude and servanthood, we can say Muhammad is the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He would have missed out on this uh, relationship between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if he had taken the wife. The wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sayyida Aisha radiallahu anha said, A crescent moon will pass. And a crescent moon occurs at the beginning of the month. A crescent moon will pass. And then another crescent moon will pass. And then another crescent moon will pass. And fire will not be lit in the houses of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I.e. there will be nothing to cook in the houses of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for up to three consecutive months. No food. 
question asked, O oh, mother of the believing people, what would you eat? How would you live? And she replied, Al Aswada at We would suffice with water and dates, and that's it. Water and dates would be our food, and nothing be good. Nothing. Be now, if you look at these three incidences, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala presents the mountains of Mecca to the Prophet sallallahu in gold and silver, he refuses. Jibreel alayhi salam presents wine and milk to him. He takes milk and he refuses wine, refusing kingdom. In the houses of the Prophet sallallahu there is nothing to cook for up to three consecutive months. The Prophet's uncle Abu Talib, he was a very influential man in Mecca, and he supported the Prophet sallallahu immensely. The people of Mecca came to him and said, O oh, Abu Talib, you're a respected man amongst us. Your word is the word. Please speak to your nephew and <coughs> ask him to stop propagating this religion of his. Stop propagating this religion of his. And upon that, we will give him anything that he utters. Anything that he wishes, that he desires, that he wants. If he wants kingship amongst us, we'll give it to him. If he wants wealth, we'll give it to him. If he wants land and property, we'll give it to him. Ask him to ask for anything, and it's at his disposal, so long as he leaves propagating his religion. Abu Talib comes to the Prophet وسلم, and he says, Oh nephew, your people have come to me, and this is what they do. This is what they said. <coughs> when the Prophet وسلم, heard that they were offering him anything in this world, anything, anything that he'd asked for, kingship, property, land, wealth, it was all his. When the Prophet وسلم, heard this, he replied to his uncle and he said, Uncle, if they place the sun in my right hand and the moon in my left hand, I will never leave this religion or the propagation of this religion ever. If they place the sun in my right and the moon in my left, which means what? That if they gave everything in this world, everything that comes under the sun, under, under the rays of the sun during the day, and everything that comes under the light of the moon during the night, if they present everything to me in this world, I will never leave this religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, the chase of man is what? From the east to the west, from the time of Adam alayhi salam till the end of time, the chase of man is material. The chase of man is how can I fill my stomach? The chase of man is how can I feed my children? The chase of man is how can I look after my family and my household? If I don't have material, if I don't have wealth, how can I do this? The chase of man has always been this. And the chase of man of these affairs is only from other men, is only from fellow human beings, not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And look at whom Allah presents the mountains of Mecca to in gold and silver. Tell me, if, if the Prophet had accepted, would those mountains have not changed into gold and silver? Indeed, they would have changed to gold and silver instantly. Why? Because the creator of the heavens and the earth, he said, I will change them for you into gold and silver. And the Prophet refused. The people of Mecca offered him everything and he refused when he had nothing. Jibreel offered him wine upon which he would have had kingship, but he refused. What does this all teach us? That our Prophet wasn't a Prophet of this world, wasn't a Prophet who chased material, wasn't a Prophet who was out there just to fill his stomach, who was out there just to earn wealth, but he was a Prophet that was carrying a treasure that was more precious and that could not be matched by the wealth of the heavens and the earth. It could not be matched by the wealth of the heavens and the earth. That's what he was after, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's what he left behind for the believing people who were around him and for the believing people till the end of time. 
The chase of man at the time of Adam <coughs> is the same chase we have today. Its colors, its flavors, its shapes, its texture might have changed today, but it's still the same. I have to feed my stomach. I have to look after my household. I have to feed my children. I don't have time to pray. I don't have time to fast. I have to look after my family. This is the same chase that man has always had. But who has succeeded? Who has succeeded? The Prophet ﷺ was the best and the greatest of examples. He was the one who found most comfort. He was the one whose heart was at absolute tranquility and peace. Absolute tranquility and peace. And now, we have enormous amounts of material before our eyes, in our homes, around us. But tell me, who finds tranquility and peace in their hearts? Why? It's because our Prophet Wasallam, he wasn't after the chase of the dunya. He was seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the one who seeks Allah, Allah looks after the affairs of his house, his family and his children. The Prophet said, Inna Allah takaffara li talib al-ilmi bin rizq. The Prophet said, The one who seeks the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah looks after his provision, Allah looks after his rizq such that he goes through no trouble. He goes through no trouble in the sense that his heart is always at peace. If he has something to eat, he thanks Allah. If he doesn't have anything to eat, he doesn't get agitated. He doesn't get. Uh, he, he doesn't. He doesn't become. He doesn't start to panic. He doesn't have a nervous breakdown. But rather, he is steadfast with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, knowing that the one who fed me today, he feed me tomorrow. The one who fed me today, he feed me tomorrow. This is why the Prophet said, If you believing people had total dependence upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he would feed you the way he feeds the birds. They leave their nests early morning, empty stomach. And they return every night with filled stomachs. The one who feeds us today will feed us tomorrow. But the chase of man, the chase of a believing person, is not his stomach. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken uh, into his own account. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not only taken into account our stomachs, but he's taken into account the stomachs of every single creation that he has created. Allah said, وَمَا مِنْ دَابَةٍ فِي الْحَوْضِ إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ مُسْقُهَا وَيَعْلَمُ مُسْتَقَرَّهَا وَمُسْتَوْدَعَهَا كُلْتُمْ فِي الْكِتَابِ الْمُبِينِ Allah said, there isn't a creature that walks upon the earth إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ مُسْقُهَا except that its sustenance, its provision, and its risk is upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you have a king, if you have a president, if you have someone in authority who comes to you and says, I am going to look after the affairs of your home. I am going to give you enough that you will be able to sustain your house throughout this month. You will be at confidence. You will be at peace. You will be at ease. But how is it that Allah is saying to us, Illa ala Allah is to her. That your provision, your sustenance, and your risk is upon me. And then we still forget him, then we still turn away from him, and we still forget to thank him and neglect his orders, O oh, people of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, La in shakartum, la azidanakum. If you thank me, I will increase. That's your job. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he blesses us in this month. In the month of the Prophet وسلم, the month which is known as the month of Shabbat, the Prophet وسلم, said, this is my month. And anyone who honors, reverses, respects, and gives dignity to the 
the month of Sha'ban, he has indeed given me dignity, honor, and respect. And the one who gives me honor, respect, and dignity, I will wait at the gates of paradise to welcome him.